Hello and welcome to another video in the basic concepts of organic chemistry. Uh, today we will learn how to draw the molecular orbitals of benzene. So the molecule of benzene uh, looks like this. It's a cyclic molecule with six carbon atoms and there are three double bonds present in the ring which are uh, in conjugated form like you can see a double bond and a single bond and then a double bond a single bond so there is an alternate double and single bond system which means that uh, the system is delocalized or resonance is present there and so you can draw the molecule in this form as well where the double bonds uh, change their position so it means that this pi electronic density is equally distributed throughout this ring and we can draw this benzene molecule in this form as well in which you can draw a circle a dotted uh, circle uh, showing the electronic density uh, shared equally uh, throughout the six carbon atoms in the ring now to form a double bond we must have two p orbitals so each of these carbon atoms is sp2 hybridized and each carbon has a p orbital so there are a total of six p orbitals involved in uh, formation of these three uh, double bonds and because of delocalization or resonance they overlap with each other and as you already know uh, uh, from uh, another video that uh, in which we discussed how to draw the molecular orbitals and we discussed an example of 1,3-butadiene you know that uh, when atomic orbitals they combine together to form molecular orbitals the number of molecular orbitals that are formed as uh, the as a result of this combination is equal to the number of uh, atomic orbitals that combine to form those molecular orbitals so we have six uh, p orbitals and they uh, combine together uh, because of this delocalization or resonance to form six molecular orbitals so we will see how you can draw these six molecular orbitals of benzene on an energy scale so the first uh, molecular orbital would look like this so we have six carbon atoms and on each carbon we have an unhybridized p orbital present now this is the lowest energy orbital possible and uh, in this molecular orbital the wave functions of all the six p orbitals would be similar on uh, the same side of the ring so above the ring the shaded part uh, of all the six uh, orbitals are above and the unshaded part is below the ring for all the six orbitals now for the second orbital how we can draw these molecular orbitals or how many nodes are, would be there how many nodal planes can we draw or uh, mm, what would be the actual position of the nodes so to draw the molecular orbital uh, uh, the second molecular orbital you can cut this molecule uh, right through its center with a nodal plane so you can pass a nodal plane right through its center now in case of 1,3-butadiene that we discussed in another video that you can find here which is a linear molecule so if you draw a nodal plane it passes uh, through one bond or one carbon atom in maybe in another uh, molecule or in another species now in 1,3-butadiene it passes through one bond but because benzene is a cyclic molecule if you pass a nodal plane it will pass through two bonds or two carbon atoms right so in this case this nodal plane passes through two carbon carbon bonds and when it passes through two bonds which means that you have to place two nodes so two nodes are present in this molecular orbital so if you start from this carbon and draw the molecular or the p orbital here uh, with a shaded lobe above this ring and the unshaded is below and if you move uh, here, if you want to draw the, the p orbital here, it should have the same wave functions as this one because there is no node. And the third one will also have the shaded part up, the unshaded down. And now to draw this p orbital, you see there is a node here. So across the node, the wave functions must be opposite. So in this case, the shaded part is down here, the unshaded is up, which means they cannot overlap with each other because the wave functions are opposite. 
For the fifth carbon, we will have the same wave functions as this one because there is no node here. So the unshaded part is up, the shaded part is down. And then for this, we again have the same wave functions as this one. And interestingly, you see it has opposite wave functions to the first one because there is a node right here. So this is how you draw the second orbital. The third one will have uh, the same energy as the second one, right? So these two have the same energy and because uh, they have the same energy it means they will have only one plane uh, nodal plane passing through the molecule so this nodal plane cuts the molecule into half vertically so you can draw another plane in a horizontal way which cuts the molecule again into half but in this case this nodal plane passes through two carbon atoms uh, it's not passing uh, right through the center of the bond but it, it is passing through the carbon atoms and so you can put the nodes right on the carbon atoms. And you already know that a node means minimum probability of finding electron. And when the probability of finding electron is minimum, it means there is no orbital because orbital actually is the probability of finding electron. So uh, you don't have to draw the orbitals on those carbons uh, on which you have drawn the nodes or through which the nodal plane passes. So again, starting from this carbon, if you draw the molecule the p orbital uh, in this way with the shaded part up here you do not have to draw the p orbital because here we have a node so across the node you have to draw another p orbital here and across the node the wave functions must be opposite so this has an opposite wave function to this one then for this carbon uh, it will have the same wave function as this one so the unshaded part is up then we have a node and the last carbon and so they these two will have opposite wave functions on the same side and interestingly this one has the same wave functions as the first one because there is no node present here so this is how you draw the third molecular orbital for the fourth molecular orbital now we cut the molecule uh, through two nodal planes and you draw the planes in this way to cut the molecule into two uh, in fact four halves so you draw them diagonally in this form and because we have two nodal planes they pass through four bonds one two three four and so you have four nodes here again we start from this carbon drawing the p orbital in this form with the shaded part up then we have a node so this carbon will have an orbital with unshaded part up the shaded part is down here we have the shaded part up no node between these two carbons so they have the same wave functions there is a node here so opposite wave functions you can see here again another node so opposite wave functions for these two orbitals and finally uh, this last orbital has the same wave functions because there is no node present here now the fifth orbital again will have the same energy as this one the fourth one and because we have cut this molecule through two planes we draw two planes uh, in different direction uh, in the fifth orbital as well so one is vertical the other is horizontal one passes through the center of the two bonds and the other one the horizontal one passes through two carbon atoms so again we start from this carbon with the shaded uh, so we have four nodes we start from this carbon with the shaded part up you don't have to draw an orbital here because we have a node and so we draw an orbital here with opposite wave functions and then there is another node so opposite wave function again for this carbon then you don't have to draw another orbital here so finally we draw an orbital here and these two have opposite wave functions because of this node and these two also have opposite wave functions because we have a node here finally we have the sixth molecular orbital and in this case we cut the molecule through three nodal planes so we draw three planes cutting the molecule uh, into half three times and now you see that uh, we have three nodal planes so they pass through six points in the molecule and which means that we have six nodes in the molecule 
So starting from this carbon again, if you draw the molecular, the p orbital in this form with the shaded part up, this one will have the shaded part down, then the shaded part up, then down, and then up again, and then finally this one will have it down. So these two again have opposite wave functions. So you can see in the sixth orbital, all the orbitals have opposite wave functions. So on an energy scale, there are uh, actually uh, four different energy levels. The first one with one orbital, the second energy level has two orbitals, the third energy level has two orbitals, and finally the sixth one has a different energy level. And there are six electrons available, so you can start uh, placing them from the lowest energy orbital and then moving up. But we have six orbitals and we can draw a line right through the center uh, and the orbitals below this line are the bonding molecular orbitals and the, uh, the orbitals above this line are the anti-bonding molecular orbitals. And you can name them as psi1, psi2 and psi3. These three are the bonding molecular orbitals. Psi4, psi5 and psi6 are the anti-bonding molecular orbitals. If you want to fill them, filling starts from the first. We have six electrons, remember. And then uh, these two orbitals have the same energy. So all the four uh, go into psi2 and psi3. And now you see that uh, all the electrons of benzene molecule are filled up in the bonding molecular orbital. Its anti-bonding molecular orbitals are empty. And that means that uh, this molecule is quite stable because of this uh, placement uh, or distribution of electronic density. So this is how you can draw molecular orbitals for benzene. I hope uh, you've got it. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more interesting lectures in basic uh, concepts in organic chemistry. Thank you.